Have you ever wanted to make an angled gift bag like this, but you thought it was too doggone hard? Well, stay tuned because I'm about to show you how easy it is to make this. Y'all, this bag screams spring. It is absolutely beautiful. I love the way that it's angled and tapered, and I know that you're going to love it. Y'all, this is a bucket style tote, and the process to make it is so simple, and it doesn't take much material. So I'm really glad that you're here right now because I'm going to be giving you a closer look at this bag in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here is a closer look at our fabulous gift bag. When finished, this bag measures nine inches across the top, six inches across the bottom, and it is nine inches tall. And I'll turn it to the side so that you can see how it tapers in as we go up. And that gives us that flared bucket look that you see here. So you can pull out some of your prettiest papers and make as many of these as you want. So here is all that we're going to need to make it. So I will not be using chipboard on this project. I am using a medium weight cardstock, decorative and plain. So I have two pieces that are cut at nine by four. I have two strips that are cut at 12 by two. And I have two pieces of 12 by 12. So this is really going to be easy. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take these strips and score them on the two inch side at one. And y'all, it's time for me to clean my scoreboard again. So I will be doing that real soon. So let's score at one. Take our second one on the two inch side, score at one. Then we are going to fold and burnish those scores. And then I'm going to take my glue and place glue on the inside. Y'all, what we're doing right now is we're making the handles first because we want that glue to have a chance to harden. So I'll fold this over and then I'll use my big old spatula to help spread that glue and to help my paper to curl like this. So I can take this one and set it to the side and we just do the same thing with this one. And as you can see, I didn't even remove my label. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you are a long time viewer and subscriber, welcome back. I'm always glad to see you. Thank you all so very much for helping to support my channel. I can never ever say thank you enough, so I'll just keep saying it, thank you. So we have both of these and we're just going to take them and set them to the side. Then we're going to go ahead and do all of our scores so we can put the scoreboard away. I have this piece of four by nine and on the four inch side, let's go ahead and score at two. And we'll do the same thing on that second piece of four by nine on the four inch side, let's go ahead and score at two. Now we're going to take the two 12 by 12s. We're going to score at three all the way across. Then I'm going to take it and put it in and we're going to score at three. But we stop once we meet that score mark that we made at three going this way. So you're going to score at three and stop. Now you can score at nine and stop at that three mark. So what I did was where I scored at three all the way across, I aligned that here at the top. Then I scored at three to meet that score and I scored at nine to meet that three inch score. So we're going to take our paper, score at three again to meet that score mark. And then we'll score at nine to meet that three score mark. Then we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish that three inch score. Then we're just going to take our paper where we scored at three coming in this direction and just pinch until you get to the fold. The same thing on this side. Just pinch that score until you get to the fold. 
and it's going to look like this. And you can see that that three score that we made up to the line does not go all the way up and that is what you want. So we'll do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and fully burnish that three inch mark that I made all the way across. Then I'll take the part that I scored up to the line and I'm just going to pinch it to give it a crisp little score like that. Now this is how we get our angles. So right in the center point of where we made the three inch score, meet that three inch line, you're going to have a fold this way and a slight fold this way. Right in that center point, you can make a mark. And I'm making a mark so that you can see what it is I'm doing. And I'm also going to zoom in just a little bit to make sure that you can see this. Then I'm going to take a ruler and turn it around to the opposite side. So there are the marks that I made. And I'm going to make a mark here at 10 and a half and a mark here at one and a half. So hopefully you can see those marks. I don't mind the marks on this paper because I'm really making this for demonstration purposes so that you can see how to make this beautiful bag. So we'll do the same thing here. You can see where we scored at three and stopped at that score mark which created a little intersection. And just go ahead and somehow mark it or eyeball it. So then I'll take my ruler and we're going to place the ruler like this and make a mark at 10 and a half and a mark at one and a half. So hopefully you can see my marks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler, position it on the mark I made at the bottom and slide it over to the mark I made at the top. Nothing about this will be perfect. And then I'm just going to draw a line and I'm drawing the line so that y'all can see what I'm doing. And then I'll go back and show you what we do with the line. So I am taking this piece, aligning it with that mark there. I'll slide it over. And make a mark. So you can already see how this is tapered. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. So I'll place my ruler, align it there, and make my mark. Same thing here. Now you don't have to make these marks. I am simply making these marks on my paper so that I can show you guys what it is that I'm doing. It's not necessary for you to make a mark on your paper if you get this process. You can actually use a pencil if you want, make very light marks, and then go back and erase them. So these marks that I made are just for demonstration purposes. I would not make the line marks on my paper. I might make some type of a mark here, but I really don't need to make a mark here at the bottom because I can see that intersecting point. But I might mark off at the top to make sure I have my measurements the same. So all I would be doing is taking my paper, taking my stylus, and creating a score. So in place of where I have that mark, I would ordinarily just make a score. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to place it on that line, and I'm just going to score making sure that my ruler doesn't move and making sure that I get a really good score impression. We'll do that on both. So if it helps you to make a mark, go ahead and make a mark. Just make sure that you practice this before you commit that good paper. But like I said, y'all, this is a very simple process it is not hard at all. And as you can see, it's only a couple of markings that we need to make. 
So now we'll make the mark over here, align it, and score. So now we can find those score marks and you can pinch that score like this. There's your shape. We'll do the same thing over here. There's my shape. So now what I'm going to do with it folded like this, you're going to have this edge that protrudes. Go ahead and just trim it away. And you're going to do that on both pieces. So just fold it. You'll see that piece sticking out. Go ahead and remove it. Now I'm going to take my big old spatula and I'm basically just going to burnish this to get it nice and tight. And so I've zoomed back out because what we need to do now is we need to remove these two corner pieces from one piece. So I'm just going to remove this piece all together. Then I'm going to angle in just a little bit, a very slight angle guys, not a big one, right there. And then we'll remove this piece. and this piece. Then I'll do another very, very slight angle. And we have this piece that looks like this. Now we're going to take this piece and when we cut, we're going to cut in this direction. So I am just going to cut on that score mark like that, and then I'll angle, angle, and reduce. Cut on this score mark, angle, angle, and reduce. Y'all, we are ready to put our bag together and it's going to be very easy. We take this piece and we join it to this piece right here. And I'm going to do that using my glue. And because I'm using a medium weight decorative cardstock, I'm going to end up with a pretty firm base on the inside, but if you want it to be even firmer, you can add some chipboard to the inside. We won't be doing that because the base will be firm. So I like to use glue when I'm doing this part of the project because it gives me the wiggle room that I need to be able to move that paper around and get it nice and straight. All we're going to do is take these two pieces, fold them in, and add some glue. And then we'll add glue to the inside of one half of this, bring it up, and when I do, I'll be making sure that the tops match. And by matching, I mean this peak is pretty even with this peak. So we're going to go ahead, place our glue here. Then I'm going to place some glue on this piece. Now you'll notice that I didn't take my glue all the way to the top because we don't need it to go all the way to the top. So now I'm going to take this and what I'm going to do is I am just going to, and I want to make sure that this top is matching this top. And when it is, I can just lay everything else down. Pull in that inside piece, get it nice and stuck. I'm going to go in with my bone folder And now you can see how that looks. So again, I want to make sure that this point here is even with this point. We're going to do the same thing on this side. 
So when I start putting it together, I'll put it together like this and basically point to point matching. So I'm going to take my glue, add some glue on this section, then I'll add some glue on this piece. I'm not going to take the glue all the way to the top because we don't need it to go all the way to the top. So now we can take this piece and fold it in like that. And we can take this piece and fold it. And then I'll just finagle and move it around until the two top points are meeting. Then I can go on the inside. And we can get everything nice and stuck. And y'all, there we have our angled bag. That is truly how simple it is. No magic, just making a few visual marks or actual physical marks on the paper so that you'll know where you need to score and fold. Score, fold, cut. That's all we did with this project. So now I'm going to take the two pieces that measure four by nine, fold them like this. I'll take these two pieces and let's see how they're going to fit. So I am going to snip off just a little bit. And when I snip, I'm going to snip at a slight angle. So you can see how that is slightly tapered. And I'll do the same thing over here because I want to follow the natural shape of this bag. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tape on the front because I don't want to run the risk of having like glue bubbles showing or the glue mark showing underneath. But I will place glue on the inside. Placing the glue on the inside or on the back side will give me a chance to get everything positioned properly before I actually place it down. So I'm just going to put that on, eyeball it for accuracy, then I'll go in and we'll get this stuck. Then I'll do the same thing with this one. I am going to cut at an angle. take this piece and put it on like that. Again, I'm going to use my tape runner on the front. And then I'll place some glue on the back. You can do this step however you like. So let's go ahead and get this piece placed down and then I'll stick it. And what I mean by glue streak, sometimes when you use glue and you try to spread it, sometimes you can see those streaks underneath and I didn't want that. That's why I used tape on the outside and then I used glue on the inside. So now we're going to bring in our handles and I am just going to take my scissors and just round those ends a little bit. And the way I'm going to put these on, I'll take it like this and I'll just turn it like that and find my placement. So I am going to put these on using hot glue. And I'll take this and just turn it and find where I want it to be placed before I actually stick it down with that hot glue. Then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to add some hot glue, add some hot glue here. Then I'll stand it up, try to get my placement nice and even with that front strap.
And there is my bag. Now, one thing that I do like to do, even when I'm using hot glue, I like to take just a little bit of my reptile adhesive and you might have a little bit of gapping right there. I take the reptile, put it in, and then I add a clip. And this is just giving me double adhesive protection. So I have wet glue and hot glue on this. So let's just place a clip there. And there's another opening right there. Put a little glue in there. And put that one down. Then we'll add a little glue right here. Take this clip. And let it dry. Alright, and while this is drying, I am going to go ahead and just place down a couple of little flowers here at the bottom. Not going to do too much, just a couple of, I think these might be daisies, I'm not really sure. Place that one there. Add some glue to that one and place it there. Then I'll take one of my petals and place that petal right there. And I'll take this petal. I'm going to place it right there. And then I have one more. And I'm going to place it right in there. And then I can go ahead and just take some decorative gems and place them here. These are from the Dollar Tree, y'all, and they work very well. So I'm just going to place these, trying to get them even. And y'all, there is our second beautiful bucket bag. It is absolutely gorgeous inside and out. And like I said, when finished, this is going to measure six by nine by nine here at the top by three all the way up to by one and a half at the top. So it truly is a beautiful bag that you can put lots and lots and lots of goodies in. And it's really not a difficult process. Most of what we do is not difficult. We just have to break it down into bite-sized steps. Y'all, here we have it. We have these two beautiful large bucket bags, perfect for any season, any reason, anyone. You simply swap the paper and turn this into what you need for it to be. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video enough to come back. And if you have enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button and maybe leave a comment. But even if you only stop by to watch this video, thank you for giving me some of your time today. As always, you guys, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.